The Ocean Engineering Experience, or OEX, is a part of the suite of programming we have at MIT Sea Grant designed to introduce students to engineering, specifically ocean engineering. So what the summer camp aims to do is immerse students for a week and an in-depth experience that will take them from sort of knowing what engineering is, thinking they're interested, to really understanding what engineering entails, what an ocean engineer might do, what types of skills they need and how they're applied, so that they come away understanding what is engineering, do I want to do it? I'm Marina Dimitrov and I'm here because I like robots and I like the ocean, so Ocean Robotics. I'm Brian Gilligan. Savvy. Peter. David. Matt. Ian Rolf. Kelsey D'Souza. Andrew. <laughs> James Mackman. Stuart Collier. Yeah. Marissa Kager. Michael. Connie Zay. Matt Maxwell. Nicholas Chin. I love the ocean and engineering, so this sounded perfect. I was thinking Charles. I'm Sarah Brennan. I'm George Vanazan. Reva Khan Halleck. Brandy Wilmer. You know who I am. <laughs> The first day really introduced the students to their engineering challenge, which was set in this real world scenario where there is a power plant up the river from MIT. And this power plant uses cool water from the river to cool their machinery. As a result, there's hot water that's dumped back into the river and this causes problems for the ecosystem. The students were working under the assumption for the week that they are part of this scenario where they each developed an ROV company where they were asked by the power plant to build a vehicle that would temperature survey the river. The first task was really for the students to understand what they were doing, to gather background information on how they would solve the problem for the week. So after the students were introduced to the design cycle, which would be the framework for their investigation for the week, they need to go see their test conditions. They need to see the river where they're going to throw their vehicles in. We sent them out with a CTD, which measures conductivity, temperature, and depth, so that they could get a feel for what the temperature looked like, where it was important to survey, and what conditions existed there. So, um, I think we should head back to Secret, and then we can come back out here after lunch. After that, students were introduced to the marine biology aspect that they're going to need to deal with through a guest lunch lecture by Todd Callahan from the Coastal Zone Management. A lot of the wetlands, this is in the late 1890s. After getting more of this background on why temperature change is important and can be problematic in the river, students were introduced to hydrodynamics and hydrostatics and did lab experiments where they tested the thrust of different propellers and looked at different buoyant materials to start to determine what materials they wanted to use to build their vehicles and how those would affect how they move in the water. Day two introduced the students to more background on how to present their ideas and think about design. So in the morning we worked on engineering drawing and computer aided design. So students began to learn how to draw different shapes and part drawings, both on the computer and by hand, so that they could represent their ideas. You can imagine with your ROV, you might draw a box that says thrust, and draw a box that says frame. In the afternoon, the students had a lesson in a lab on electronics, and began to experiment with ideas and what they wanted their vehicle to look like, in preparation for the next day, Wednesday, the design review. So Wednesday started with a design review where each group was asked to stand up and present to each other and the staff what their ideas were, why they made certain design decisions, what their thinking was, and what they thought was going to work. We then shared ideas and students all got feedback on things they maybe missed or things that were going to work out really well and were able to tweak their designs and begin building. Wednesday, we're halfway through the week, and students have gone from ramping up into being invested in the project and are at the point where they want to stay in lab all the time. And you sort of have to kick them out and say, when, you, when you're grad students, you can live in the basement all day, but now you got to go to the aquarium. To sort of gain a, a bigger perspective on what's happening, because it's at the point of the week where we start to get very focused on tiny things, and they stop seeing the whole picture. And the whole picture is that 
Ocean engineering is a tool to explore the ocean, to look at changes in the ocean. And so we have to look outside of our box of I'm soldering to this is the whole goal of our project. Thursday introduced the second half of the project, which was the sensor suite. So students needed to build a vehicle as a platform, but they were interested in looking at temperature in the river. So they needed to build a sensor suite also to look at temperature. So students learned to use a microcontroller, um, connect temperature and pressure sensors to it, and then connect elements that would save data or record data. The remainder of Thursday was build time, so beginning to design the sensor while still finishing up plans and testing on the vehicle. It works! Test and final presentation at the museum for the students. The goal for the end of day was to finish up their design. So we began the morning with another design review of the sensor portion, where students presented their ideas um, and received critiques on things that they needed to continue to think about. And afterwards, they continued to finish up their vehicles and build the sensor suites. So the students received a lunch lecture at Sea Grant by Professor Christostomides about his journey through ocean engineering, how he decided that the subject was of interest to him, and what sort of things the students could expect within the field of ocean engineering. Almost every day I learn something new, and it's a lot of fun being an ocean engineer. So let me tell you what are the things you might want to keep in mind and what problems you can address how to respond to its environment, right? And um, presumably... After the lab tour and talk at Sea Grant, the students returned to the lab and we worked well into the night. So the end of Friday is this process of tweaking all these things that we, we didn't see before, leading up into Saturday morning, which was a continuation of finishing up the vehicles and preparing for the final presentation. At about 2 o'clock Saturday, um, all the students were ready to bring their vehicles out and we went and did a field test um, along the river. Each student had a different sampling plan and tested their vehicles in different places. Yeah, the shark, the laser shark. Oh, this is almost lasers. the end of our tether. It works. Yay! It works. And the sensors are all inside. Yeah, that was fun. Afterwards, um, we head back up to the MIT Museum for a public presentation. I'm delighted to welcome the OEX Ocean Engineering Experience hosted by MIT Sea Grant. So by the end, the students all had a great sense of accomplishment, but also the sense of wanting to continue to tweak things. I kept hearing, five more minutes, I need five more minutes in the lab. I keep hearing lots of plans to, well, I'm starting a robotics club at my school now. Can, can you help me do that? For students now want to continue learning more about engineering because they have a better feel for what it actually is. The number one feedback I get from the students is that they didn't really understand what engineering meant, but they thought they were interested. Now they understand what engineering is. It's harder than they thought, but they're really interested. Yeah.